hello students um, so let us continue our discussion in the previous class we sort of got the introduction of ordinary differential equation from today's class and onwards uh, we will actually look into the theory aspect of it right so the first uh, uh, i mean basically uh, the lecture if you look at the syllabus it's about uh, existence and uniqueness of solution for an ordinary differential equation we'll mostly look into the first order type but we'll discuss uh, some theory of it okay so let us start with uh, with one example right um, consider um, so consider uh, an ode consider an ode dy dx is equals to fx y right fxy sometimes i also end up writing f of y comma x don't get confused it's just function of x and y all right and uh, here where the function f where the function f x y is given by 2 square root of x when x is greater or equal to 0 and equals to 0 when x is less than 0 right so far whatever od you have solved with some initial condition you i mean if you have paid attention then you must have asked this question whether this is the only solution or does this od has more than one solution or the solution is defined up to which uh, point is it defined on the entire real line or is it defined on some subset of the real line right so when you have an od the question that is we are asking that the existence of solution of that ODE where there exist y x that satisfy that ODE. So, basically you are looking for the solution. Now, when you are looking for the solution several questions should pop up immediately that what is the interval of existence is it existing locally that means is it uh, um, uh, existing on the subset of the domain of definition on which the ODE is defined or if the solution is existing whether it is unique or not right. So, for this example, we will verify that. So, here uh, suppose uh, f x y is given by this and I am saying y at 0 is equals to 0, right. Um, so, then uh, here uh, let us take uh, instead of uh, this, I want to take y square root of y and this will be because if it is x then it is not really that much interesting. So, y and y ok. So, now uh, if I uh, uh, if I solve this ODE. So, basically what will happen is uh, I have a solution. So, what I have is uh, dy dx equals to uh, square root of uh, square root of uh, y when y is greater or equal to 0 and equals to 0 when y is less than 0. This is what we are given to us and of course, y at 0 is equals to 0, right. So, if you look at this equation, the corresponding initial value problem, let us go to the next slide. Uh, we can call this as uh, equation number uh, 1, this as 2 and this as 3. So, the initial value problem 1, 2, 3, the initial value problem IVP IVP 1, 2, 3 uh, with uh, initial condition uh, has has uh, at least two solution. Let us see what are they at least two solution. Although your initial condition is y at 0 equals to 0, but it has two solutions, right? What are those two solutions? Uh, clearly, first one is very easy to inspect y 1 x equals to 0, right. So, if you substitute x equals to 0, of course, the initial condition becomes 0 and y is equals to 0. Okay, let us go back to the equation. If you substitute y is equals to 0, it will satisfy the equation. So, the first solution is y is equals to 0, which is correct. Now, the second solution is uh, y 2 x is equals to x square. So, then on the left hand side what we will get? We will get uh, 2x on the right hand side we will also get uh, 2x 
So, that is also satisfying and uh, y at 0 is again 0 which is valid for y 2 x also. So, basically uh, y 2 x where x is getra equal to 0 uh, for all x uh, getra equal to 0 also satisfying also uh, satisfying given ODE. But that is strange yeah? because you have uh, one in initial condition. So, from there you should be able to obtain a unique solution, but it is not giving you unique solution. It is actually giving you um, at least two solutions of the same ODE. So, there is a problem right. Now, let us look at one more example where we will see the solution will not even exist on the entire real. Let us consider one more example. So, I have uh, this example, uh, let me just write it down. Um, yes, so suppose uh, example 2, these two examples will tell us that why we need to motivate the idea of existence and uniqueness of the solution. So, example 2 is uh, let uh, dx dt does not matter whether we write t or uh, dy dx whatever. So, let dx dt is equals to x square right and uh, x at 0 is equals to 1. This is our given ODE. Now, if you try to find the solution, so then it will become uh, dx by x square equals to dt, you integrate both sides, then it will become minus 1 by x and this will be t plus c. If you use that initial condition, then uh, since uh, x at uh, 0 is equals to 1, so you will have minus of 1 and this is t plus uh, a sorry 0 plus c, so c is equals to um, minus 1. So, I will put it back there and uh, then I will get um, uh, let us call it as equation number. So, this is equation 1 I am calling this as equation 2. So, from 2 what do we get? We will get um, minus 1 by x equals to minus 1 uh, plus t. So, basically x equals to it will be uh, 1 minus t. So, 1 by 1 minus t right. Now, here if you look at the solution, um, the solution is defined from minus infinity to 1, but the minute when t becomes 1, the solution simply blows up. Your limit x tends to uh, t tends to 1 x t does not exist or it simply goes to infinity. So, that means the solution does not exist on the entire real line. So, it exists on a subset of the real line. So, this gives you an idea that the solution is existing locally that means on a small subset of your entire uh, domain where the so, uh, given ordinary differential equation is defined. Right? So, this tells us two things that whenever an ordinary differential equation is given whether uh, you will be given the initial condition whether the solution exists uh, locally or globally. If the solution exists whether it is unique or not. So, these two examples are telling us that there is something that is missing in the given equation itself. The ordinary equation, the ordinary differential equation that is given to us, there is something that is missing which is actually disturbing the existence and the uniqueness. And this leads to the very basic and the first uh, theorem of ordinary differential equation that is called as picard lindelof theorem. So, there are two theorems that we will talk about Peano's theorem and picard lindelof theorem. These are the theorems that guarantees that when you will have um, the unique solution and uh, how you extend your local solution to global solution and all. So, let us uh, look into the uh, Picard's theorem, but before that I have to define some uh, terminologies and uh, then we will uh, go to the Picard's theorem. Alright, so before we actually begin uh, the uh, 
theorem on uh, local existence and uniqueness. Let us introduce some uh, terminologies. So, um, I, I think you already um, know these things. So, let us say, uh, let us say we have uh, um, pen. let uh, x equals to x1, x2, x3 up to xn be any arbitrary point in Rn. Then we define the Euclidean norm of x as uh, uh, Euclidean norm. So, we do not have to put double uh, Euclidean norm for Euclidean norm we can keep it uh, a single line I think that should be. Uh, um, but since we are not dealing with uh, function spaces let us keep the double norm. So, that is not an issue. So, norm over Rn is nothing but your summation uh, i running from 1 to n uh, x i whole square whole to the power half right. So, this is the norm that is Euclidean norm that we define for the vector x uh, which has uh, n components x 1 x 2 x 3 up to x n which belongs to R n. Now, if uh, um, x is a function of t if x uh, is a function of uh, t uh, function of uh, t then the norm uh, of x t on some interval i on some interval i that is our t belongs to the interval i um, is given by x uh, over the interval i is equals to supremum over all t belonging to i uh, norm of x t over r n right. So, basically uh, if you are defining, defining a norm uh, for x t uh, x is a function of t. So, we will define in terms of supremum. And uh, since um, we say that the solution uh, satisfies the given ordinary differential equation, that means uh, if uh, your x uh, is satisfying that dx dt equals to some f of x, so basically your x is uh, at least um, once uh, differentiable with respect to t. So then, in that case, um, instead of sup norm, you can also use maximum norm, right? So, when you are defining a supremum norm, basically supremum norms are defined for the continuous functions, right. So, if the function is continuous, then you can talk about its uh, um, supremum, not the maximum, right. And uh, when the function is differentiable, then we say that uh, the maximum and minimum value because that is when you can do the derivative. So, instead of uh, sup, if the solution satisfies uh, the given ordinary differential equation, then you can also use maximum norm. So, you can write maximum of all such t belonging to i such that x t over r n right either one of them. But as I told you the explanation that uh, since it satisfies the solution we can use the maximum. Alright, now let us uh, define what is called Lipschitz continuity. So, definition Lipschitz continuity. Continuity. The vector field f of t comma x is said to be Lipschitz continuous. Lipschitz continuous on i for the time derivative and omega for the x right. So, x's are being chosen from omega and uh, t is the time derivative, uh, i is the interval uh, the, the domain for the time derivative. So, uh, the vector field f t x is said to be Lipschitz continuous on i cross omega 
if if a constant l exists such that of course a positive constant such that for all x comma y in the domain omega that means uh, the points are being chosen from the domain omega and a t the time interval the, the, the time variable is being chosen from the time interval that is i right so omega is basically your subset of rn so whatever theory that we are deriving we are deriving the general theory so uh, we might as well do it for rn and uh, for n equals to 1 that will be r so it's a simple generalization from rn to r Right. So, let us do a general theory because it is a general course. Uh, so, um, we are saying that x and y are any arbitrary point in the domain omega which is a subset of Rn. All right. So, if there ex exists a constant L uh, such that for all x and y in the domain omega which is subset of Rn, uh, uh, subset of Rn and all t belonging to y. Uh, we obtain or we have the vector field f is said to be Lipschitz continuous on the, if there exists a constant l such that for all uh, x and y in omega and all t in uh, i we have uh, norm of f t comma y minus f t comma x r n norm uh, is less than or equal to L times norm of y minus x over r n. Right. If f is Lipschitz continuous, we denote simply. So, since if f is uh, Lipschitz continuous, continuous, sorry. continuous continuous then we write f belonging to Lipschitz i cross omega right so, Lipschitz continuity is basically you take any two arbitrary points, it is valid on R as well. So, you take any arbitrary points from the domain uh, on which the uh, depend independent variables are uh, taking the values from and uh, you take the norm or uh, in R it will be just mod. So, mod of f x y uh, mod of f t comma y minus uh, mod of uh, f t comma x must be less than or equal to uh, sorry this is not equal to less than or equal to must be less than or equal to l times um, uh, mod of uh, y minus x if you are in rn then you say norm of uh, f t y minus f t comma x over rn is less than or equal to l times y minus x norm over rn right so this is the definition of Lipschitz continuity all right let's proceed um, And uh, let us uh, state our uh, first result uh, based on Lipschitz continuity. Um, so, property 1, you can say property 1. If f t comma x uh, is defined on i cross omega with omega subset of r n uh, convex and uh, f is continuously differentiable continuously differentiable with respect to uh, with respect to x in omega and finally, finally uh, the Jacobian 
j is bounded on uh, i cross omega that is l equals to norm of j t comma x over r n uh, over i cross omega. is finite. Then f is Lipschitz continuous with constant L. With constant L. All right. So, Jacobian is basically the second order derivatives, uh, sorry, uh, Jacobian is basically the, the derivatives, uh, the first order derivatives of uh, the function um, f. So, this is not j, this is basically your f, uh, f is equals to um, uh, j, norm of j, uh, no, it was correct actually, uh, norm of j, uh, norm of j. Uh, t x um, at uh, i cross omega and j this uh, Jacobian can be calc can be calculated by uh, this formula. So, we I think you already know j of uh, let us say u comma v uh, with respect to uh, j of u comma v or f comma g uh, that means uh, del of uh, u comma v by del of x comma y. So, if u and v are any two um, functions of uh, x comma y. So, it is uh, del u del x, del u del y and then you have del v del x, del v del y, right. So, this is uh, the definition of Jacobian. So, Jacobian of uh, any two function u and v, if u and v are functions of x and y. So, basically it is the determinant of uh, the first order derivatives, right. And uh, you write the derivative for the first function with respect to x, y, z, whatever number of variables you have, then go to the second row and so on. And so, we are defining by L the Jacobian of that uh, of that uh, uh, function uh, f in a way. So, now uh, how to prove this? So, in order to prove this, uh, we can write uh, or we can uh, proceed this way. So, suppose uh, x and y let uh, x and uh, y be any two arbitrary points in omega, then the line segment, line segment joining the two points be x plus s times y minus x. This we already know from our usual vector analysis course. Now, for any t, for any t, we have uh, f of t comma x minus f of t comma y is equals to integral from 0 to 1, we can write uh, d d s of uh, f of t plus uh, is t comma x plus s times y minus x d of s, right. You can write d of f then and uh, then at uh, s this s equals to 1, uh, it will be f of uh, t comma x uh, f of t comma x and at uh, s equals to 0 it will be uh, uh, f of uh, t comma 
uh, y right. So, this we can write and uh, now um, what we are going to do we will uh, uh, write this as integral from 0 to 1. So, this is d d s of f of t comma x plus s y minus x d of x uh, d of s and uh, this can be further written as uh, since you are doing the derivative with respect to s uh, we can write this as Jacobian of uh, Jacobian of uh, t comma x plus s y minus x uh, d of uh, s and uh, of course y minus x sorry. So, d of s divide uh, this can be written as uh, x minus y uh, d of s right. Now, we can take the norm on both sides. So, if I take the norm taking norm on both sides with respect to R n, if you take the norm on the left hand side, it will be norm of f t comma x uh, t comma x minus f of t comma y bar over R n is less than or equal to this norm will go inside and if you are taking mod or norm on the integral the norm or mod goes inside the integral and this will become integral from 0 to 1 norm of j uh, t of x plus s times y minus x norm right into norm of x minus y d of s. Now, let us go to the next page. So, basically norm of the Jacobian we know that that is less than or uh, that is equals to L and this will be x minus y. So, on the left hand side I have norm of f t comma x minus f of t comma y over R n this is also over R n. So, L L the constant L is basically the norm of the Jacobian. So, this shows that um, that the function f is Lipschitz uh, Lipschitz continuous, right? So, if your function f uh, is uh, continuously differentiable with respect to x, then we can say that, uh, and the Jacobian, of course, from there we can obtain that the Jacobian is bounded. Uh, then we can say that the function f is Lipschitz continuous, right. So, this is um, a very first criteria to check whether a given function is um, Lipschitz continuous or not. So, if the function is continuously differentiable, uh, if, if you are have a function of one variable, if it is continuously differentiable, then definitely it will be uh, Lipschitz continuous, right. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Now, let us uh, look at uh, something called uniqueness uh, result. So, theorem if the function f, uh, f sorry, the function f. t comma x is Lipschitz continuous, Lipschitz continuous on i cross omega with omega as the subset of r. Lipschitz continuous then, then the equation or initial value problem, uh, let us write initial value problem, then the initial value problem dy, uh, dx dt equals to f of t comma x has at most 
one solution and x at t0 is equals to x0 where so if the function f t comma x is Lipschitz continuous and i cos omega with uh, omega subset of r n then the initial value problem this uh, dx dt equals to f of t comma x where x at t comma 0 is equals to x 0 um, where x at t 0 x 0 is contained in uh, i cross omega comma has at most one solution right. Of course, the point uh, t0 and x0 has to be in the domain um, i cross omega, otherwise you are starting from a different interval. So, then there is no point of talking about i cross omega. So, having this Lipschitz continuity, as I told you at the beginning of this lecture that we lost the uniqueness because somewhere uh, we were getting the two solutions of that problem. So, that means the function which we were dealing, the right hand side function which we were dealing for that example was not Lipschitz continuous. So, if you have the right hand side as Lipschitz continuous function, then the solution of your ordinary differential equation will be unique, all right. And uh, of course, the initial points has to belong to y cross omega that is the part of this statement. So, let me just read it out once more. If the function f t comma x is Lipschitz continuous on i cross omega with omega subset of r n, then the initial value problem dx dt equals to f t x comma x t at 0 equals to x 0 where t com t 0 comma x 0 is contained in i cross omega has at most one solution. So, this equation this equation here has at most one solution. So, we will look into the proof of this uh, in the next class and uh, we will try to um, relate it to some examples where we can see um, if the function is not Lipschitz continuous what will happen and if it is Lipschitz continuous then uh, how we are getting the unique solution. So, maybe I will give one or two examples in the next class. So, thank you for your attention and I will see you all in the next class.